What is going on, people? Welcome back to White Whale Fishing. So, as you guys can tell, this video is for those bank beaters, those pond guys. Uh, you guys, I'm one of you guys, and I've been one of you guys my entire life. Uh, and the reason I'm really specifically talking to you pond guys is because I, I was out fishing a pond yesterday, and I think this is really important information. Um, ponds are smaller bodies of water, and... If you're in the same season that I'm in right now, late winter, early spring, that's really good for pond guys because ponds are gonna warm up faster than lakes. Plain and simple. You're gonna have fish getting active faster than uh, the fish out in big lakes simply because water temperature is gonna rise a little bit quicker. Um, so some of the things that I wanna talk to you about today is Targeting the biggest bass in the pond. This is a really, really good time of year to potentially catch your PB. Why? Because fish are moving up, getting ready for the spawn, which is months away, um, but they're going to start feeding up. These bass have been in their wintering holes all winter, and they're looking to start moving up shallow and start feeding up. So, I think it's a great time of year to talk about this. There's a lot of different things that we have to talk about before we get into the baits. Number one, you have to gauge the activity level of your body water. And one of the, there's a couple ways you can do that. Um, knowing the water temperature. Hey, Greg, how do I know the water temperature? Go buy a digital thermometer from Walmart or, you know, some sort of store that sells kitchen supplies and keep it in your backpack and test the water temperature while you're there. Uh, if you guys are in the mid 40s and climbing, um, that's a really good thing. Uh, if you have, if, if pay attention to the weather, if you've had bright sunny days and strong winds coming out of the south or coming out of the west, that's a good thing. Um, because they're typically going to carry warmer temperatures with them. If you're not seeing ice on the ponds anymore, that's a really good thing. So those are some things that you need to pay attention for, to regarding what's the activity level. And the, the last part of that is you got to get out there and you got to throw some baits. Uh, I was out there smashing them on this guy yesterday. It's a little four inch Kitek Easy Shiner. Um, and I was fishing it on a super lightweight 1 16th ounce uh, swim bait hook. And I was catching, you know, I caught good numbers of bass. I even caught a couple big ones for light tackle, you know, two and a half pounder. Uh, one of the things I wish I had done was pay attention to what I was doing and maybe make an on the fly adjustment and start throwing some bigger baits once I'd found the school of bass. But that's one of the other things you have to do is you've got to find the fish, even in a pond, right? And where can, should you go to start finding the fish? Check the West Bank check the north bank uh, if it's a bright sunny day or if you've had multiple bright sunny days and the wind's been coming out of the west for two days there's a good possibility they're on the east bank because that wind is blowing warm water that way does that make sense so one good way to cover water and search for the fish especially if you're on the bank obviously you're not using electronics is throwing a finesse bait um, you're gonna find small fish but that's okay this time of year usually where there are small fish there are more fish and if there's more fish, if they're all grouped up, there's a possibility that the biggest bass in that school is going to be somewhere nearby. Um, another important factor is your rate of retrieve, right? This time of year, cold water, things are moving slow. Things aren't moving fast. So if you're, we're gonna be talking about throwing big baits, but we're gonna be talking about throwing big baits and moving them very, very slowly. That's, I think, one of the most important keys to all of this. So why not just go out to the pond and throw this all day? That's fine. That's what I did yesterday. It's a lot of fun. But if you're on a mission, you know, looking for your white whale, you probably want to try and throw a bigger bait because fish are moving up, looking to bulk up, looking to get ready for the spawn. So we are going to be talking about throwing baits like this instead of baits like this uh, because a one pounder will definitely try and chase this down. A one pounder or even a two pounder may not necessarily try and chase this down. That makes sense. Um, forage. Forage is very important, uh, especially in ponds. Generally, we're usually talking about bluegills or we're talking about some sort of 
small bait fish. We're not usually talking about gizzard shads or threadfin shads. There are some exceptions to that rule. Um, but the majority of the baits that we're gonna be talking about today are either gonna imitate a bluegill or gonna imitate some sort of bait fish, right? And then the last time, the last thing I really want you guys to pay attention to is when do we fish? Um, if you're like me, everyday Joe, and you're working nine to five, then you fish whenever you can. Um, but there's certain things that I try to pay attention to if I'm heading out on the water. I want to know what time is sunrise, what time is sunset, if I'm going out during those times. Is it a bright sunny day? Uh, is, there a, is there wind? And where's the wind coming from? Because that's going to dictate maybe which area of the pond I move to first. Prime feeding times. Uh, we talked about sunrise. We talked about sunset. It's important to know when the moon is going to be directly overhead and when the moon is going to be directly underfoot. Um, those are prime feeding times. Also, the three days leading up to the full moon or the new moon and the three days after the new moon or the full moon are generally better days to hit the water. So with all that being said, now let's start talking about baits. Uh, we're going to start off with big baits and you guys already saw me show this. This is a burrito baits gill. Um, this is a great bait and uh, doesn't necessarily have to be this version. I was gonna see if I have it, something else. Um, this is a big bait, top hook, internal weight, but this, when you try and reel this in, you can't burn it, it's gonna blow out on you. A really, really slow handle turns and that's gonna work really, really well because we all know as pond guys, most of the time we're fishing muddy bottoms. Uh, it's not top water season, so this is a really good middle of the water column bait, especially if you want to stay down. Uh, you might find some submerged vegetation. If you find your right rate of retrieve, you can keep this over that submerged vegetation, but as low in the water column as possible. And there's other versions of baits like this, like the Matt Lures Ultimate Bluegill or Savage Gear make something very similar to this. Um, Lots of other different brands that are more readily accessible and uh, a little bit more affordable as well. So, but this is definitely something the next time I go hit that pond, once I found that school, I'm going to be throwing something just like this because I know that there's bluegill in that pond and I know there's six pound bass in that pond and that's what I'm after. Um, outside of uh, that, you know, large rubber plastic swim baits, start talking about just oversized baits. Uh, this is a wake bait uh, in a bluegill pattern. If your water temperatures are in the 50s, may not be a bad idea to start throwing something like this. This is also another swim bait. This is uh, Gantarell Jr. Um, you can rig this to dive, you can rig this to wake, depending on your water temperatures, again, another good bait to throw. Just keep in mind, these are treble hook baits. So uh, if you're not in the type of pond where you can throw some treble hook baits, probably better to look at something a little bit different. Um, keeping in line with the swim bait theme, I, was, I showed you guys what I was throwing yesterday, this guy, right? But what I'd wish I'd done is made an adjustment and throw something like this. But I can't throw something like this on an owner beast hook like this because it's going to weight it down. It's going to weight it down. It's going to dig into that vegetation. So what I would recommend is looking for uh, owner does make a different type of swim bait hook that has a much uh, lighter hook, a uh, much lighter weight on it. Um, you just need to get something that's going to fit a six inch swim bait. That way you can cast it on bait casting gear. You can cast it out. You can reel it slow. Um, it'll sink slow, but you can keep it off the bottom and keep it out of that vegetation. And most importantly, you're rigging it weedless. Um, like I said, something I wish I had thought about doing yesterday. Outside of swim baits, um, it's a really good time of year to start throwing creature baits. Because, especially in ponds, because they, imit they do a really good job of imitating bluegills. Uh, but if you're going to throw a creature bait, throw a big creature bait, right? Throw something like a Magnum Game Hog. Uh, this is in a blue craw color. Um, you can rig it weedless. You can throw it weightless, or you can even put a 1 16th ounce bullet weight on there. Uh, something like a Magnum Rage Bug, or even a, a lobster uh, from, from Strike King. They have those a lobster, which is basically an oversized Rage Craw. Um, again, weightless would be a really good idea. All of these Rage Bug, all of these Rage baits are made with salt, so they sink. And they're easy to cast on bait casting gear, even rigged weightless. Um, 
A couple more baits. Everybody likes to throw a Senko. Pre-spawn is a great time to throw some sort of stick bait. This is the five inch. Try upsizing to the six inch. Uh, you're gonna help weed out some of those smaller fish and um, still be able to fish a stick bait, especially if this is a confidence bait for you. I mean, just look at the difference in size there. And uh, lastly, the, the last bait I'm gonna talk about is something I have a ton of confidence in. I've been throwing them since as long as I can remember, and it was a go-to bait for me in Florida in the spring and the fall, and that is a weightless fluke. Um, it's versatile. You can speed it up, you can slow it down, you can fish it near the top of the water column, you can fish it near the bottom of the water column, but you can fish it weedless. And that's one of the best things about um, this bait in a pond environment. This is a Houdini color. This exact bait is the Reaction Innovations Shiver Glide. I really like it better than the, the Zoom Super Flukes simply because it's a little bit longer, a little bit thicker, and it casts a little bit better on bait casting gear. Um, but I can, you know, really subtle rod twitches, let it sink, let it glide, twitch, twitch, it comes up and then it goes back down, looks like a dying bait fish of some sorts. And, you know, I just think that they're really not seeing this a lot this time of year. Um, so I think it's worth a shot putting this out on the pond. Um, but that's it. Those are all the tips and tricks and techniques that I've got for you. Again, all of this was spawned from uh, my, my time on the water yesterday on that pond. And um, hopefully these tips, techniques, baits inspire you guys to get out there, get on the water. I appreciate you watching. Uh, get those lines wet. Get those rods bent. I'll see you soon. Take care. God bless. Tight lines.